them, we even. Y'all ain't got no guts, we going yeah. all the way with y'all. Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. There's 36,000 of them and 2 million black people living in New York City. They can't kill us all. Can't. Hey, hey, hey. Hello. Hey, 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 hey. Bopping away. It's a different mood this week, man. It's a different mood, man. It's a different mood. Yeah, man. It's a different mood. I need to. I need to keep a chart of all your moods now. Like every week, it's a different mood. Um. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm making fun of me a little bit, but I'll take that. <laughs> like you know, I have feelings, fam. Oh. Does I, you know. You want your hug. Like it's not. It's not all just like uh, you know. It's not all just like deep philosophy and profound thinking. What's up, see? It's not just deep philosophy and profound thinking. Some people you know have feelings, eh? Some people have feelings. I, I got feelings, fam. Like, I got feelings, too. I know I look fly every week, but, like, I got feelings, fam. Like, Jesus Christ, you can't just, like, dig into my man. So, like, Ithar, I just wanted to say this right off at the beginning. I just wanted to, you know, just say what a lineup. Oh, well, look at you. Someone's catching up. Someone's catching up. Oh, what a lineup. <laughs> 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 You caught up. No, I like this. Well done. Well done. You caught up. You, you've been looking at the folks now. You're starting to catch up with the groove. That's good. I like I like your thinking. I like your thinking. So look. That's good, fam. Hey, listen, Shandow's in the room. Mark's still buried, but Shandow. Oh, hello. What up, what up, what up, what up, Shandow? What's up, boys over there? Shandow's in the room. Um, listen, let me just say what's up to everybody. Welcome to everybody who's turned up this week. I appreciate all of you turning up. Thank you very much for being here this week. You know what this is? We open seminar series. You know how this goes. Every single week we hear every Monday, 7 o'clock, same time. We do the same thing. Every single week we kicking it, figuring out what all things mean out here. Same old, same old. You know how that goes? We on, where are we now? Go. 12. 12. This is seminar 12. Seminar 12. We're here 12 straight weeks, fam. That's three months in a row we've been here now. Good Three Lord. in a row, every single week, every Monday, 7 o'clock, we here still figuring things out for all of you guys. And hey, in case anybody who's a little bit confused, this ain't no regular seminar, because I'm a real PhD. Like, y'all can check me out. There's a book. Look me up. Y'all can find out. It's the kind of expertise and the kind of knowledge you have to usually pay through the nose to get. We bring this stuff to you for free. You know what I'm saying? Education, new generation type thing. You know how we do. Open seminar. I like it. Build on twos. We're taking over right here. I like it. Are we build on together. Hey, 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 you are on point today. Hey, yo, what's going on with you? What you have for breakfast? Yo, what you have for breakfast, though? Yo. We're building together. All building together, god damn it. Hashtag that shit. Yo, somebody hit that. Homegirl learns quickly. Oh, has learned. Homegirl knows her shit. I'm mad impressed. Your homegirl's on point. Yo, well done, homegirl. I'm with you. That's good work. We all build on together. We are building together. That's what we're doing. That's what we're here to do. We are building together. That's what we're trying to do with our crew. Thank you all of you guys for turning up and everybody who watches every week. And don't y'all forget for a single second, the music that you hear when you start off in the introduction, that's our stuff. That's our ish. That's our music. Y'all can hear that every single Sunday that turns up on our, on our study sounds mix every Sunday. It's on SoundCloud. It's on YouTube. It's on Spotify. It's on MixCloud. It's on Instagram. It's on my Facebook. It's on the website. Y'all can make no excuses. We're everywhere. <laughs> We and it is fire. Shit, you know how it is. Plus, listen, for anybody who, who, who catches the first 20 minutes of the seminar and y'all can't be here for the end of it, I know how that goes, but that's why we got you. This will go up on IGTV or the story afterwards. It will also go up on YouTube next week so y'all can catch whatever you miss here this week, next week on YouTube. You can catch all the other episodes on YouTube. They're all there too. So, for real, much love and blessings to everybody who turns up every single week. We're still kicking it. We're still killing it out here. Seminar series 12. Um, yeah, I'm in a, different, in a different vibe, you know what I'm saying? I'm in a different vibe, it's a slightly different mood. Yeah, tell me about it. What's the vibe this week? I don't know, listen, Kevin Over released a track talking about We Run the Streets, and that was his take on Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Still Matter. And um, listen, Damn that, right. Black Lives Still Matter, just so we're clear. But um, Damn right. Black Lives been mattering, Black Lives do matter, Black Lives will matter. I don't know what's wrong with your people, but in any case. So, yeah. Um, Casanova just put out a track. It was really, really cool, Run the Streets. And I don't know, man, the way Casanova deals with like Black Lives Matter is just like, 
yo, let me just say this, homegirl. It's, it's, I'm not, I'm not condoning anything. I'm not suggesting anything. All I'm saying is, it's a two minute and forty long, uh, forty second long song, and the whole video is people beating up cops. I ain't saying nothing. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm not saying I lean one way or the other. Ah, right, maybe I lean one way. But, but the point. Is... <laughs> Kill Neil Wilson out in Oakland. Let's get the cracker. Who attacked him? I'm feeling blacker. They better call for backup. What do you want? From me? I grew up in Peckham. What do you want? Lines have been drawn. Fam, I grew up in Peckham. What do you want from me? Yeah. Be fun, those motherfuckers. Hey, listen. Before we even get into the to the seminar, let me just say this. Let me say this outrightly. First and foremost, I want to say what's up to Chaz, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, out 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 there in the United States and Washington State. They're killing it out there. You cannot rebuild until you break it all the way down. Respond to the demands of the people or prepare to be met with any means necessary, by any means necessary. So when this goes on YouTube, like for real, one up to Chaz, yo, keep that going, man. Um, and defund the police, like motherfucker. Defund the police, yes. Defund the police, Let's do this. like a Let's motherfucker. Do this. Like a Let's motherfucker. Do this. And I mean, like, for real, like, don't, I ain't even talking about like, yo, be light with it. Let's be conservative. And I defund those motherfuckers. Like, like a motherfucker. I can think of a thousand people who do that job way better. I don't need no bulletproof uh, vests. I don't need no weapons or nothing like that. We can do that job a thousand times better. Like, defund those motherfuckers real quick. We don't need those people. But anyway, all of that aside, we are here for a reason. This ain't a political seminar. It, well, it will be at some point. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, down. I'm down. Whatever the conversation is, I'm down. I'm, I'm a brown man wearing a fire fitted. On a, on a Monday <laughs> evening, like, how are we not going to kick politics at some point? It's going to come up. Like, I don't know what to tell you, but it's going to come up. It's in our blood. It's in our blood. Man, yeah. it's just a ting, man. You was, it's Baghdad, bro. What do you want from me? <laughs> Baghdad. What do you want from me, man? That's the thing. Anyway, listen. We are here for one thing. We are here to figure out whether or not philosophy is a waste of time. And broadly, off the back of that, what we're here to figure out is whether or not thinking correctly is a waste of time, right? And for the students out there, y'all can take it like whether or not study is a waste of time. I don't know. We'll kick that subject particularly another day. But for now, it's whether or not philosophy and philosophical thinking is a waste of time, right? That's what I want to figure out. That's what we're here to figure out. That's what we're here doing. Yeah, that's me and Hongo. That's what we're doing. That's the whole game. All right. right. All right. Thinking correctly or is there, is there, there's a correctly and there's an incorrectly, I assume. Yeah, well, there's what everybody's doing and then there's what I'm about to explain <laughs> to you. <laughs> All right, sorry. I apologize. I don't really apologize. <laughs> I don't really, because that's kind of my job. But nevertheless, I apologize. I don't mean, mean it like that. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. All right, hold on, hold on. What I'm saying is this. No, 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 because let me get my jokes out. Let me get my jokes out, because it's important. Let me get my jokes out. Because, because, as ever, there was a poll, right, on this week's yeah. seminar topic. There was a poll. And yeah. the, question, the question of the seminar is, is philosophy a waste of time? That was a sincere, that was, that was the question that we asked, whether or not that's the, what happened. There was a poll put up, and I was intrigued. Because in both... And I'm dying to know the results. Oh, you want to know? Oh, you want to know? This is, this, 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 this is hilarious. Okay, you want to know? So here's what happened. So the poll has... Maybe I don't, actually. Oh, you want to know? The poll's been up for like 48 hours or something like that. I don't remember how long exactly, but the poll's been up for a little while. The results? Almost, almost, I'm not saying it is, but almost 50-50 split. Almost. It's not, there was a winner, but it's almost a 50-50 split, right? As to whether or not philosophy is a waste of time. But here's what kills me about this. Never mind the 50-50 split, that's not what's important. Never mind that some people think that philosophy is a waste of time, that's not what's important. We can assume that much, that's not what's important. What's important is <laughs> everybody who said that philosophy is not a waste of time is like either an ex-student of mine or somebody who knows them. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that begs the question is it no 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 so here's no no don't bear no question all that really means is that for everybody who <laughs> thought it wasn't a waste of time it just means i haven't taught you yet i'm gonna get to you that's all that means <laughs> that's Leslie all Scott. that means everybody who thinks that philosophy is a waste of time i just haven't gotten to you yet i'm gonna get to you don't worry don't worry that's what we're here for so y'all just hang around particularly those people who thought it was a waste of time y'all hang around I'm going to figure things out with you. We're going to chop this up and see what comes of it. But, but, having said all of that, yeah. let's get into this. In order for us to figure this out, as ever, as we do every week, at, like I said, I'm actually an academic. I don't look like one in the sense of like, you know, I don't dress like an idiot. But, 
I'm gonna tell you. I don't know what to tell you. But but um we do have to treat this like serious academic individuals, right? And insofar as we're doing that, we do the same thing every week, right? And what we're doing this week is the first thing in order for us to figure out whether or not philosophy is worth time to make sure we know what the hell the word means. Because we might know what the hell the word means. Let me give you an example. I was in a cab one time. Ain't story time, relax. No, no, don't get carried away. This ain't story time. But I was in a cab one time. And like, you know, driving around, my man's taking me to my spot. Everything's cool. And then my man says to me at one point, he's like, yo, what do you do? And this is back when I was doing a PhD. He's like, what do you do? And I was like, uh, I'm studying for a PhD. He's like, oh, for real? Like, in what? I was already impressed because most people get like, like, what's a PhD? But all right, cool. But he's like, no, for real, what are you doing your PhD in? I was like, philosophy. He goes, philosophy? And I was like, philosophy. And he goes, really? And I was like, nah, for real though. And he says, that's amazing. And I was like, I'm really impressed. Because I'm like, wow, somebody gives a fuck enough about philosophy that they're like, they think it's a cool thing to study. And they think I should be studying it. Like, that, that's not a common reaction, particularly not from a cabbie. Yeah. So my man pauses for like five minutes. He carries on driving, looking intently. And then he looks over at me. So, does that mean you could tell me the future or something? Septic peg. <laughs> For fuck's sake, Meg. I'm not Mystic Meg. Like, that's not how that works. Oh, and for those of not that age, Mystic Meg. <laughs> oh, for real. Like, come on, if you're not of that age, y'all can hit on Google for crying out loud. Look, figure this stuff out, man. Gazing into my crystal ball, I can, by using my head, foresee what the future holds. And it includes striking the nut on someone if they don't turn off the dry ice machine. Like, Miss Cleo, Mystic Meg, that whole thing. I'm yeah. not that person. I'm not that person, fam. I'm like, that's not, what the hell? Oh my God. Like, no, says, does that mean you can tell me the future or something? No, mate, that's not, that's not what it means. I can't tell you the future, bro. That's not how it works. I don't know that there is a future. I can tell you that. Like, I could definitely tell you that. <laughs> I could tell you, I could that's, definitely that's tell you. That's the philosopher response. Yeah, I can, I can debate whether or not there is a future. We could do that all day long if you wish. The cab ride's only another 15 minutes. I don't know if we we'll figure it out in that time. But we could try in any case, having said all that. Okay. So, so here's what I think is really interesting. Here's, here's part of the reason why I think most people don't know what philosophy is and people get confused by philosophy. Yeah, that's right. The hat's off. Shit goes serious. Yeah, that's right. Man's all, man's all it's not Mystic Meg is, is what, nah, what it's, it's not. not. Mystic Meg. Nah, it's not Mystic Meg. Man's all smooth though, it's you know Mr. what I'm saying? Meg. Anyway, so listen. So here's why people get confused. Because if you look up, I was curious. Because I'm a philosopher, but like, I don't know that everybody knows what philosophy is as such, right? And I'm going to do what most kids do these days. When they don't know what something is, Google. So I Googled. All right, cool. Let me just type up philosophy into Google and see what the fuck comes up. I don't do this as a philosopher. I don't need to look that shit up. It's what you I do. That's, yeah, no. I'm going to just, I'm gonna just wait. No, I'm going to wait. I, I just <laughs> wait until you get the jokes out. I'm going to just, now nah, you get it out of your system. Homie, do your thing. You get that. Do your thing. It's cool. <laughs> Stop it. Listen. <laughs> so the point is I Googled it, right? <laughs> when you, I, shut up. I Googled yeah. it. When you Google it, when you Google it, here's what happens, right? You Google, you Google the word philosophy, look for a definition. And the definition that you find, and this isn't just like the average definition, it's the Cambridge definition. The Cambridge definition, the use of reason in understanding such things as the nature of the real world and existence, the use and limits of knowledge and the principles of moral judgment. That's not philosophy. That's... Uh Oh, because there was a lot there to unpack. Yeah, I hate to break it to you. And I read all of that it and is I was like, philosophy. Nah, I hate to break it to you. I, I read all of that and I was, and I was like, yeah, none of that is philosophy. What are you guys talking about? The use of reason. So and it's understanding not the use of reason? reason? Well, a little bit. The use of reason, understanding uh, the, uh, uh, th such things as the nature of the real world and existence, the use of limits of knowledge and the principles of moral judgment. Okay. So I read this and I was like, all right, cool. And then it continues to talk about um, uh, Descartes being, you know, the grandfather of modern philosophy and, you know, <clears throat> formal. Uh, we already had that seminar. I'm not going back over and, this. And you've already kind of buried We've him, already, you know, now, we, uh, we, a couple yeah, of seminars ago. Shots ago. were fired already. I know he's a dead Frenchman, but like still, shots were already fired. Like it's already done. It's what it is. If y'all want to find out how I feel about Descartes, y'all can check it out. Go back on the other seminars. They're on YouTube. Go check it out, right? But I ain't doing that right now. The point is, 
Then you look up the etymology of the word. That is to say, like we usually do, we look up where the word comes from, right? So never mind the definition as it stands now. What I was much more interested in is what the, the etymology of the word is. Because we are still using the same word that was being used in ancient Greeks. Let's say the, 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 the context or the place that people tend to attribute the origins of Western philosophy to ancient Greeks, right? So cool. So we are still using the same word. Philosophy is the same word they were using. We just pronounce it a little bit differently, but it's the same, same word, right? Now, when you look up the etymology, things get a little bit different. From, so the etymology of philosophy then becomes philosophia, obviously because it's Greek, so it's got to be a little fancy. It becomes, now, you know, you know how they do. It becomes philosophia. And then from philosophia, you get the translation, the love of knowledge, the pursuit of wisdom, the pursuit of wisdom and systematic investigation. Yo, I feel like we've lost homegirl. Hey, buddy, listen, this is just me and you now. We can edit this out later, but it's just us now. We lost homegirl. And it, look, she's gone. Anybody got any jokes on homegirl? Y'all can kick it right now. She won't know nothing. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. Say something. I'm having serious Yo, what's up, homegirl? Diss me. I mean, talk. <laughs> back. Oh, back. That you heard that? But I I'm... think I'm Mystic Meg. <laughs> I got to be honest. With you. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous now. I'm genuinely a little nervous. What's new, lad? Always against the system. You know what I'm saying? Rebel with a cause out here. <laughs> like a motherfucker. Y'all heard that? Y'all heard that? Uh, Red man and pressure song. Oh, yeah. Rebel with a cause. Y'all need to take that out. That's on the mix too. Rebel with a cause is fire. Yeah, I'm just dropping it everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Just everywhere. Anyway, so listen. The point is, so the, the, the Greek, the etymological uh, origins of the term, right? So the love of knowledge, the pursuit of wisdom is systemic investigation, or systematic, sorry, investigation. But if you break it down further, if you take it a step further than that, it breaks down to the two terms, philo and sophia, where philo means loving, and sophia refers to wisdom. 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 It's right, a little yeah. different than knowledge. Wisdom. Yeah? So where where the sophist or the sophistry, what have you, you get the word sophistry, what have you, the sophist is the learned or the wise one. So if I am a sophist, then I'm the learned or the wise one. So if I'm a philo sophist or a philo sophia, then I'm one who loves wisdom. I'm one who pursues wisdom. It's a fundamentally different thing than the pursuit of knowledge. Why? Because knowledge, in a very, very simple, really matter of fact terms, I'm not gonna kick any complex philosophy, but this is why I have the PhD and why y'all come here every single week, God damn it. But, yeah, that's what we do. But in really, really simple terms, knowledge, knowledge is ex okay. post facto. To take it out of the weird Latin that reminds you that I have a PhD. Yeah. To kick it out of the weird Latin. Oh my what else God. is that for? That's the only reason you do it. But to take it out of the... Why else do you think we speak in Latin every now and then? What else are you doing it for? It's just to go like, yo, by the way, and this was really hard. I'm a doctor and it took a long time for me to get this right. Um, the point is, Ex, is it? ex post facto means after, okay. after the fact, right? Ex post facto. It means it happens after the fact. Knowledge, knowledge by definition is retrospective. Uh-huh. Yeah? That's to say something has to happen in order for me to uh -huh. then know about it. It's ex post facto. And wisdom? It's retrospective. I can't know something until after it's happened. Wisdom, when you are wise of something, you understand what was there before you knew it. Ah, oh, Mystic Meg. I am psychic. I am psychotic. <laughs> um, uh, systematic. Systematic. What do you mean by that? Systematic investigation just literally means investigation, but by means uh -huh. of a particular and, system. And then how do you define that? What, what's the system? Let alone the, the acquire. That's where it gets interesting. And that's where it gets interesting. And that's okay. where it gets interesting because, because when we're talking about knowledge, we're oh, presupposing oh. a system. When we're talking about knowledge, we're presupposing a particular system. Let's say what I know, a la Descartes, what I know and what I don't know functions according to, a, okay. to an existing system. What I'm wise about, my wisdom, includes what I know. It does include what I, it doesn't exclude, that's not separate from, it includes what I know, but it's a far broader point. Okay. It includes much more than just what I know. Okay. Okay. Hmm? 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 See, see, you see the wisdom. You see, you see the wisdom. Wisdom just spilling out. <laughs> but just spilling out, right? Just one spilling, last all kinds of wisdom, does wisdom come, I assume, logically, Look. after the acquiring of knowledge, yeah? Like, it's dependent knowledge. No, you have wisdom no. without knowledge? No, no, it isn't. No. 
How? One thousand percent. How? One thousand percent. One bazillion percent. You can have wisdom without knowledge. You know how many wise. Ah, fam. No, 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 no. You know how many wise motherfuckers know all kinds of shit, but don't know how to use a phone. Knowledge. They yeah. don't know how to look up Google. That's knowledge. Knowledge is not specific. What's non-specific knowledge? Gibberish. <laughs> so <laughs> 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 so <laughs> Fish. <sticks. laughs> oh, but here's the problem. No, no, no. But here's the problem. You have. To no, you have to have the wisdom to understand that flat Earth, whether or not the Earth is flat or the, the, the circumference of it or whatever else, occurs, you can discover that according to a particular set of like rules. But you have to have the wisdom to know that in the first place. Because there's mad idiots out here who are just rediscovering physics. They're like, oi, mate, did you know you can figure out whether or not the Earth is round based on whether or not I can see the light from the sun and the moon? I don't really understand how it works. But to be honest with you, mate, I'm starting to wonder whether or not the Earth is actually <laughs> round. And by the way, this is called gravity. <laughs> what ends up happening is that over the course of time, right, what we have is this definition now, this, this current modern definition where philosophy has everything to do with knowledge and nothing to do with wisdom versus the etymological definition where philosophy has everything to do with wisdom and nothing to do with knowledge, right? And that difference uh -huh. is a consequence of time because we're still using the same word that we were uh -huh. using back then. We've just changed. If the definition now isn't what the definition was then, it's because we've changed. We're using the same word. We just think it's something else now than it yeah. was. That's because we changed. You see what I'm saying? And what we changed in is over the course of, and we'll talk about this, but over the course of time, philosophy got okay. specified. It got, it, made, <clears throat> it got made technical in a particular pursuit, a very specific that is to say, it, may, it was made into a field of knowledge as opposed to a field of wisdom. And the consequence was it got refined and specified and more and more and more minute and more and more particular and more and more, you know what I'm saying? Shouldn't more and it more have of been that. that though? Wasn't that like a good move? The consequence is this. Is this to know more and more about less and less. More, 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 nah. more about nothing. Nah, because you know? We're... To know everything about nothing. No, it was a joke last week, but it's for real this week. The, the idea was that the philosophers thought to see the nothing and everything. You're not supposed to know more and more and more about I less see. and less and less. That's okay. a technical person. That's fine for a technical person. If I work for fucking NASA, I want the people working at NASA to know more and more and more about less and less and less. I don't want you to have any ideas about anything outside of physics and mathematics, my G. Like, if I'm talking to you at NASA, I want you to know physics and mathematics, and that's the fuck it. I don't want you looking anything else up. I don't want you having the interests or hobbies. I don't want you <clears throat> like, engaging your mind in anything else. I want you dedicating yourself wholeheartedly to physics and mathematics. Because lives depend on this shit. If I'm a doctor, yeah. or if I'm talking to a doctor, it's the same thing. I want the doctor to be focused <clears throat> solely on their area of medicine. That's it. I don't want you concerning yourself with nothing the fuck else. Because lives depend on and what you're doing. And that's the opposite. I'm a philosopher. Lives, lives <laughs> depend on what I'm doing in a very different sense. They do. They do. But in a very different sense. In a very, very different sense. I don't have the, like, philosophy doesn't have the power to end a life or save one in that respect. Not like that. But it does have the power to, to make one worth living. Now you got my attention. Philosophy. Yeah, I love bars, that. Right? You think I have bars? It makes life you think I have living. bars? Oh, you think? You because I turned up mad relaxed. In my just like in a regular tea, I, I just turned up relaxed in a tea. You thought I ain't come with oh, bars. Bars, right? What are you talking about? So it got that's the difference. So it that's got more and more specialized, and that was a terrible thing because really that's a five. Okay. Let me sum it up for you. Let me sum it up for you. Let me not talk. <laughs> I'm gonna talk, but let me not use the words. The words are from, from Martin Heidegger. Now check this out. Martin Heidegger, <clears throat> who I happen to write my thesis about, but in any case, the guy's a dickhead, but never mind him. Martin Heidegger writes, he says, such characterization is a reactive attempt to rescue thinking and preserve its autonomy over against acting and doing. He's talking about the characterization of philosophy as okay. knowledgeable. Since then, he says, philosophy has been in the constant predicament of having to justify in ex its existence before the sciences. It believes it can do that most effectively by elevating itself to the oh. rank of a science. But such an effort is the abandonment of the thinking. 
because philosophy is hounded by the fear that it loses its prestige and validity oh. if it is not a science. Not to be a science is taken as failing. That's equivalent to being unscientific. Thinking is judged by a standard that doesn't measure up to it. Such judgment may be compared to the procedure of trying to evaluate the essence and power of a fish by seeing how long it can survive on dry land. For a long time now, thinking wow, has been stranded on dry he's land. Poetic as well. Brrr. Okay, but I, I, you know, we we've talked before that uh, you know Descartes and whatever ruined everything, <laughs> um, and like wanted to justify the existence of knowledge, and I, and that's like that's what happened to philosophy in in that. It lost its essence. It became technical. Yeah, I mean, look, we can scientific. cut them a little bit of slack. Like, I'm not Listen, we can cut them a little, sla a little slack, right? We don't have to be wholeheartedly critical here because to some degree, considering the circumstances in, in, in Western Europe at the time of philosophy, at the time of the quote-unquote enlightenment, which is a term that I feel like we should spend two seconds thinking about before we move on. But at the time of the quote-unquote enlightenment, what you have to understand is that, that society was experiencing a serious break in its traditions. That is to say, they were moving from mm. uh, religion, being the cornerstone of theology, being the cornerstone of our ideological point of view, to philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, mm -hmm. forgive me, to reason and philosophy and science and what have you, right? All of that stuff. There was this shift. Science had become a thing. This is a consequence right, of yeah. what they call the Copernican revolution, right? So Copernicus realizing that the earth revolves around the sun, the earth is not actually the center of the universe, blah, 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 blah. But when he realizes this, it breaks everybody's minds. Theologians everywhere go fucking crazy. They're like, oh my God, I'm not the center <laughs> of the universe, but does that mean God hates me? I'm like, no, oh my God. Why did you have to be in the middle of the universe yeah. for you to think you were important to God? Like, what the fuck is that line of thought? I still don't get it. You had to be in the middle of the universe before you thought it was, like, legitimate that God exists. But if you're not the center of everything, God can't exist. It must not be true. Like, that's crazy to me. But anyway, the point is, what I'm saying is, so they have this Copernican revolution, right? The consequences of that, the fallout with the church, meant that if you wanted to continue to pursue philosophical thought, or that is to say thought as guided by reason and the enlightenment procedures, then you had to divide yourself, you had to separate yourself from the church. That is to say, you couldn't give the impression that you were still delivering I theological see. treaties because the church would feel a way about it. So you had to specify what you're doing over and against the church. You couldn't look like you were delivering theology, whereas, so before Descartes, I mean, including Descartes, to be fair, but before Descartes, it was routine for a philosopher to have studied theology, to have studied mathematics, for a mathematician to have studied theology. That was necessary too, because it was thought of as being part and parcel of the same thing. Let's say, if I'm studying maths, I'm studying the divine order of all things. I mean, God did that, right? So like, if I'm studying mathematics, I've got to study theology, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. So at some stage, sure. they were the same study. But when this happened, when the Copernican Revolution happens, there's this break. The church goes nuts. It's like, oh, my God, the world is falling apart. So if you want to continue to pursue what you're pursuing according to the lines that you're pursuing it, you have to separate yourself right. out from theology because otherwise it would look like you're dissing the church. So I can, we can cut them a little slack and be like, all right, I get why you over-specified philosophy, like why it became this, this specialized field and why it separated itself from a broader base of understanding and knowledge and wisdom and what have you. I understand what happened, at least for political reasons. But the point is that we've moved uh -huh. so far down that line now that we've lost track of where we started. That is to say, Nietzsche has this um, famous quote. Uh, I can't remember the exact phrase now, but it's something along the lines of truth, he says, is like a coin that's lost its embossing. Yeah. Like a coin that's lost its embossing. We yeah, all still yeah. use it, but no one knows what the fuck using it. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that for for them, um, for the for the uh, Enlightenment thinkers, they had to break from theology and what have you and all of that stuff in order for them to continue pursuing the kind of thinking that they were trying to pursue. Nevertheless, it didn't, it doesn't justify and it doesn't account for the methods okay. of their philosophy itself. So the way they constructed the conception of knowledge and understanding okay. isn't warranted okay. by that move. I get the politics of it. But a philosophical structure doesn't make any okay. sense. Not warranted. That that doesn't make any sense. Okay. But that's right. that shift that happened, right? And it's it to some degree, to some degree, to some degree. I'm gonna say this. To some degree, it's explained by the paradox of what they call the Enlightenment, right? Like think about it. Just think about it. The period of time they call the Enlightenment is the same period of time yes. when empire started expanding. That's yeah, yeah. But think about this. Wait, wait. It gets deeper than that. Think about it. 
for about, I don't know, two fucking thousand years before that, all of those civilizations that they were just about to invade and, and colonize and what have you, all of those civilizations had been deeply in, immersed in philosophical thought, had produced some of the most profound philosophical thoughts that still stick with us today, to name the most obvious of which is Buddhism, but like, you know, far from the least of which. Um, Hinduism coming before that and what have you. These are profound systems of thought, complex systems of thought, whether you agree or disagree. These are, these are deep, complex systems of thought that yeah. had existed, predated Europe by a long way. Then empire happens. Europeans decide to come south. They colonize everybody, destroy everything, steal, rape, pillage, burn, what have you. Take the shit back to the, to the Northern Hemisphere. Fuck it all up, Rene Descartes. Fuck it all up, um, Arthur Schopenhauer. Fuck it all up, Immanuel Kant, what have you. And in every single instance, never fail, never fail. If you read their footnotes, never fail to remind us that their philosophies originated in the Southern Hemisphere or originated in what they call those barbaric brown people who, wouldn't have no, who didn't know what they were doing with that philosophy in any case. Arthur, Arthur Schopenhauer at one point says in a footnote of his in volume two of The World of, Will, of the World as Will and Representation, thank the, it was, it's, it's evidence of God that gems of knowledge such as these have ended in a white man's hands. You see the bullshit? You see the bullshit? But this is what oh, they see. call the Enlightenment. To take, just think about how warped a mind that is. To take Enlightenment thinking, let's say to take Buddhism, for example, thinking about Enlightenment, to rape, pillage, and steal that shit, and then call that process of rape, pillage, stealing, and fucking up the thinking, you're enlightened. There's something really nasty in there. Like, that's really nasty. But never mind that. That's politics. That's history, it's related, but it's not to do with how the philosophy got fucked up, but it's related, right? It's, it's the same thing. In any case, the point is it then starts to get absurd. Because what happens is, after a while, it starts to get so specified and so specialized that it loses a sense of the context. Well, why does that make a difference? Well, because in philosophy, that's, that's what you're supposed to be explaining, the context. It's hardly a, a, a particular study. Yeah. It's hardly yeah. a study of one thing. Philosophy. It's supposed to be in study of all things. Huh? And, and I mean, can you apply, as you said earlier, a systematic way of doing it? I mean, otherwise, anybody could just sit there, look at the tree, and go, ah, oh, yeah. how is that different? Isn't there a particular skill in applying no, but philosophy, I, nevertheless? It's not. There is, there is, but it's not a particular skill that's far removed no. from that thought that you were just having there. It's not far removed. It's uh -huh. not far removed from intuitive reflection. Like philosophical thought, here's the weird thing about it. Here's the weird thing. Just consider this for a second, right? Just take this like in, let's let this sink in for five seconds. I know everybody's using that phrase right now. Maybe it's the wrong time, but still, just let it sink in for five seconds. Think about this. Philosophy, or that is to say, philosophical kinds of thought, whether they're theological in nature, what have you, that that kind of thinking, let's say theology for the purposes of argument, theological thinking yes. has been around since there have been humans. And I mean, literally. Makes sense. No, 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 literally. See if I'm, see if I'm bullshitting you. No, 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 see if I'm bullshitting you. Go online, okay. look up Gobekli Tepe. Go look up Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe is one of, one of the oldest, if not the oldest site of human civilization that we've found, right? One of the oldest, if not the oldest. Fuck knows how many thousand years old it is. But the point is, it's one of the oldest sites of human civilization. Now, what does that mean? Civilization means more than just cave paintings or what have you. Mm -hmm. Civilization means organized activity, right? So when a society is doing thing in, something in a group, that means something more than just, you know, it doesn't mean that there's any greater intelligence, but it just means there's more going on here. Because, you know, we organized, we sat down, we talked, we figured out what we were going to do here. Cool. What they found in Gobekli Tepe, is evidence of granaries, is evidence of uh, uh, food stores, is evidence of barns, all of those things, which means that people were trying to feed large groups of people. So there was something going on here. Uh -huh. What they also found was temples and places of prayer. You know what was weird? When you carbon date the temples and when you carbon date all the, the granaries, is the it? temples came people first. Were, oh, before they were trying to organize food. That means... That means that people literally wow. prayed before they ate. Literally. Literally. Like, I'm not saying that we should pray before we eat in terms of, like, let's be good religious thing, people and what have you. We should all, all say blessings and say thanks to God. for. We should. We should. But I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is we did, literally. Before we all thought to feed each other, we all thought to pray together. 
That's a weird thing. As a, as a species, that's a weird thing. Now add that, if you add that fact to the fact, and this is also a fact, hashtag facts like a motherfucker. If you add that fact, yeah, we don't, we don't just facts, we facts like a motherfucker. So if you add that fact to the fact, yeah, I don't tell you, to the fact that, think of this yourself. See if you can run through your mind, everybody else in the live, or anybody who's engaged, anybody who wants to like jump in, but see if in your mind, right, you can think of a single civilization in the course of all of human history, no matter where in the world, at any time in the course of human history, that did not have some kind of theological framework, some kind of theological structure, some kind of set of theological principles. There isn't one. Like, I don't care where you look, whether it's ancient Egypt or the Mayans or ancient Greece or ancient China or ancient, or before China was the kingdom of China or, or, or in, in ancient Northern Europe or wherever you look, ancient Africa, wherever you look, Everybody has some kind of theological framework. The whole of human history and every mm. human mm. civilization, all of them, uniformly. What did I tell you? If what we did as a people was to pray before we ate, and what we do as a people is consistently, without question, no matter where I come from, what my name is, what my race, uh, what my race is, what my gender is, whatever else, if what I consistently do is come up with ideas of God or theological thoughts, what does that tell you about us? Philosophy is not something that you needed a, like a teacher to teach you how right. to do. You were doing that anyway. You were doing that shit right. anyway. How do you think philosophy came about? What, were we waiting for philosophers to come <laughs> up and say, hey, guys, by the way, this is philosophy now? Nah, they were doing right. it. And then they called it philosophy. You see the difference? We were doing it. It was being done. Philosophical thought was occurring. And then they decided to call it philosophy. So, but That's I mean, how, how the, but I mean, it had you to have a name like, or a different strain of thinking because that's theology, right? That's this religion as opposed to asking why a God. Right. But it's only, it's only, Right, right, right. But it's only from the perspective of specialization that say it's only when you take philosophy to be a science or that say when you have the aspirations to make philosophy a science, it's only when that's the case that you can divorce these two things. Because what the fuck are you talking about? Like when we're talking about okay. theology, how are you not talking about philosophy? I see. It's what's not philosophical things. about this? What, what's not philosophical about that? I'm talking theology. That's say I'm trying to figure out the metaphysics of the divine universe and the nature of things. Sure. What is not philosophical about this? How are you splitting these things up? And if you do, if you do split these things up, what's lost? Because something's lost. Because if what you're saying is, I can't talk about God now, yeah. because that's theology and this is philosophy. Of course. Now you cut off two thirds of philosophy. Yeah, what yeah. What's left for me to talk about now? So what ends up happening is, over the course of time, what we end up with is, um, uh, you know, let me just, let me just, Heidegger has a way of summing this up. He says, with a constant appeal to what is logical, one gives the impression of honestly being engaged in thinking one. In fact, one has already renounced it. You oh see? my God, my brain you is see? blowing. With a constant appeal to what I know. With a constant appeal to what is logical, one gives the impression of honestly being engaged in thinking while one has, in fact, wow. renounced. Wow, that's, that's almost, that's because almost it's not, spiritual it talk. Isn't that what we say in, in, in you no, know, no mind? You see the similarity? Mm -hmm. No mind. But instead, instead, what we're left with now, contemporary philosophy now, what we've got now, are people like <laughs> Nagel, Thomas Nagel, right? Motherfuckers like Thomas, Thomas fucking Nagel. That's what we got now. People like Thomas Nagel. We got people like uh, what's his name, Harry Frankfurt, right? We got people like D. Z. Phillips. We got people like Marvin Farber. I'm saying names that nobody on this live knows, but I just want to air them out because I spent 12 years just like grinding, hating these motherfuckers. It's like, yo, uh, these guys are so wrong. wrong. So this is like on so many levels. It's, let me, let me, this wrong let me give an is example. Correct one. thinking. So this is not correct thinking. Okay. Let me give you an example of me. Okay. Let me give you an example of me. Yeah. Thomas Nagel. Thomas Nagel literally writes an essay. I'm not making this up. I've read it. I had to write about it. Literally writes an essay called What Is It Like <laughs> to Be a Bat? And then for 17 pages pursues the question of being a bat. And then, no, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not making this shit up. And thinks it's a revelation to him. It's a philosophical point of some worthy note where he says, consciousness, I'm quoting him. 
Consciousness is what makes the mind-body problem really intractable. Perhaps that's why current discussions of the problem give it little <laughs> attention or get it obviously wrong. Because you know, you know what, let's translate that. You know what he's saying? You know the reason I can't figure out why my, my mind is different from my body? <laughs> Consciousness. And that's what a bat doesn't have. It's just like, it's like if I, if, if, if I didn't have this consciousness thing, then yeah, this whole mind body thing will make a shitload of sense. But it's just that I'm just, <laughs> have you guys noticed consciousness? I don't know. <laughs> Any else want to talk about that? It's weird. Oh, oh no! Oh no! They're coming in through the back door! Oh no! Oh no! Ooh. Grab the children! Save the children! <clears throat> <laughs> this conscious thing. Wait, it gets worse. He says, wait, 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 it gets worse, it gets worse, it gets worse. Later on, he says, if anyone, I'm not, I'm quoting, if, if anyone is inclined to deny the fact that, uh, that we can believe in the existence of facts like this, whose exact nature we cannot possibly conceive, he should reflect that in contemplating the bats, we are very much in the same position that intelligent bats or Martians would occupy if they tried to form a conception of what it would be like to be us. What the fuck are we talking about now? Ham sandwich, bucket and water plastic, Duralex, rubber McFisher's underwear. Plug rapid emulsion, sick custard without sustenance in Kipling Duff geriatric scenery, maximizes press insulating government, grunting sapphire clubs, incidentally. See what I'm saying? But this is philosophy. This is modern philosophy. So when people get put off, yeah. I don't blame them. Wait, it gets better. Hold up, let me get better. There's a dude called Harry... No, no, no. It gets much better. There's a dude called, called Harry Frankfurt. Fuck Harry Frankfurt. There's a dude called Harry Frankfurt, right? He's all bunch of old white men. bullshit guy. But the, it really is. There's literally just a bunch of old white men. On bullshit. Yes. Harry Frankfurt literally wrote a book. It's a book. It's a short book, thank <laughs> the Lord. But it's a book entitled On Bullshit. I'm not making this up. He's a well-paid, quote-unquote, philosopher. He apparently thinks, I don't know what about or how, but, and he's the guy who's leading, this is, the, this is why this is important, because these are the old white men heading up what philosophy means now. So when I ask the question, what have we lost? What, this is what I'm pointing out. Because what they're dealing with is this is the shit that we're dealing with. Instead, look at the stuff that we're not dealing with, because this is all I we've got see. left. Look at what we've lost. So what we're left with is things like, on bullshit, and no word of a lie, no word of a lie. Nobody has to remember this if y'all don't want to. This is not important. It is literally bullshit. Y'all can see what I mean in a second. I'm quoting my man. Forgive me for taking the time. For I'm quoting my man. He literally says, I swear to God, in the, I'm not making this up. This is a philosopher. Quote, one of the most salient features of our culture is that there's oh so much bullshit. Oh my God. Everyone knows it. Each of us, what? Each of us contributes his share. He's doing it right now. But we tend to take the situation for granted. Most people are rather confident of their ability to recognize bullshit and avoid being taken in by it. I can't recognize it because I kept reading the book. So the phenomenon has not aroused much deliberate concern or attracted much sustained inquiry. In consequence, we have no clear understanding of what bullshit is, why there's so much of it, or what functions it serves. And we lack a conscientiously developed appreciation of what it means to us. In other words, we don't have a theory. I propose to begin the development of a theoretical understanding of bullshit mainly by providing some tentative exploratory philosophical analysis. I shall not consider the rhetorical uses and misuses of bullshit. My aim is simply to give a rough account of what bullshit is and how it differs from what it is not, or, putting it somewhat differently, of <laughs> to articulate more or less sketchily, more or less bullshitly, <laughs> the structure of its concept. <laughs> I say that, well, no, no, hold on, hold on. When I say that modern philosophy is bullshit, y'all understand, I'm not just being You're rude being and I'm not being, both. like, I'm not using words to be aggressive, like, it's literally <laughs> bullshit. Like, I had to read this shit. I got my PhD <laughs> reading this shit. You understand the rage? In oh, I can. Like, here I am getting my education thinking that I'm going somewhere, getting a further education. And when I arrive, they're like, hey, have you read this bullshit? And I'm like, no. No, I didn't read the bullshit. But the question is. No, you should read this bullshit. It's you, great bullshit. You I'm said like, right, you earlier, that thing? philosophy can be about anything. It is, in fact, about anything and, and everything. And we ought not to kind of break it from other fields of study. Then why are they so wrong? Aren't they? 
philosophizing about anything? Listen. All right, give it to me. What do the, I'm quoting you. I'm quoting you. I'm going to quote for you. I'm going to quote. I want to see your question in a quote, right? Take the shout. Two quotes. Take the shout. Just, 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 just watch the fire, man. Just watch the fire. You see, what are the Greeks called truth? Not assertions, not sentences, not knowledge, but the beings themselves, the totality of nature, the human world and the work of God. When Aristotle says that philosophizing is directed to truth, he doesn't mean that philosophy must put forward correct and valid propositions, but that philosophy seeks beings in their unhiddenness as beings. Being human, hold up, I've got more fire for you. Being human means, and may the situation be ever so peculiar, not only, but among other things, to comport oneself to the unhidden. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Pow. Oh. Oh. Like, oh. I don't even I'm excited. Oh. 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 It's just. It's, it's just. That's oh, amazing. wow. Like, what the fuck are you doing to my mind right now? You know? What we're talking about, what we're talking about is a very particular kind of thinking, right? Which is, like I say, it's what's particular about it is not in the scientific sense. I have to abandon this technical scientific language, right? Um, I'll give you, I'll, look, I'll give you one more. Philosophy is not theoretical knowledge together with practical application, nor is it theoretical and practical at the same time. It's more primordial than either, but both of these per pertain primarily to the particular sciences. Practical application of theoretical knowledge has something to do with the sciences. Philosophy has something to do with much, something much more primordial than that. It's much more important than that. I'll give you a sense of what I mean by much more important than that. Somebody, there was a, there was a, there's a famous quote where somebody went to their philosopher, their teacher. It wasn't me this time around. I didn't have the bar, but you know, it's cool. It's cool. That's cool. You know, I could homage to somebody else. It's, right. it's cool. The point is, so somebody went and asked their, their philosophy teacher, um, is there a point in philosophy? It's kind of what inspired this yeah. question for this week. Is there a point in philosophy? And he says, because I, I can't do anything with it, which is true, which is a, a patently true statement. There's nothing you can do with it. Shit, I did mad degrees. I'm here on live talking to you motherfuckers. Like, seriously. Like, look at my life. Like, I'm just, I, I'm joking. <laughs> Don't I'm diss. joking. Relax. <laughs> I love you all. Like, we like listening to you. Like, Jesus Christ, you guys. Can we not do something with our lives? I know, but can you not just do something with our lives? I'm just saying, all right, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. The point is, the point is, so they say to their philosophy teacher, they say, to the, um, I don't know, like, is there any point in this? Because I don't feel like I can do anything with it. The teacher responds, you are a thousand percent right. And you are completely correct. There is nothing you can do with this. This is not a tool. It's not a hammer. It's not a saw. It's not a pair of shoes. It's going to make you better. Or anything. It's, you're right. You can't do nothing with this. But philosophy, the problem with that criticism is that it is right. Because philosophy is that one area where it's not a question of what you can do with it. It's a matter of what it does to you. Mm -hmm. I'm dropping bars all day today. Like, it's bars all day today. It's insane, oh, fam. Mate. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm listen, I'm about to start writing this shit I have down. to say. Like, so I feel like I should write this shit the, Then I want to kind of let you talk it's on now. Sure I might, write, I, might, I might go write oh, a book and stuff. Huh. Given it's so inspirational, now that you're like you're reading off these think. amazing quotes, why is it not taught more readily? Like, why is this not on curriculums? Like, why do people not pick up the the Foucaults and Heideggers of this world? Two reasons. It's really there's two very very simple reasons. One because it would require a restructuring of the way we do education. We've yeah. spoken about this before. So if y'all want to see what the fuck is wrong with education, you can see all the other previous seminars where I talk about what the fuck is wrong with education. And you can check that out. There's mad ideas for how we can fix this shit if y'all want to get involved. We all build on together right here, right now, like a motherfucker, but we'll talk about that. In any case, the point is, is that the, the, major, the, the major reason for it is that it would involve a fundamental restructuring of the way education is done, right? And that's a headache, and most societies don't want to do that, and it's all about pragmatism and logistics and what have you, so I get it. Cool, fair enough. The other reason for it is because it's not oriented towards uh, academic achievement. Not you really. What it's not oriented to academic achievement. Because it's not. If you're teaching philosophy correctly, you are not teaching it 
with the intention of arriving at some academic achievement. That's not your goal. That's not the idea. You're not doing it because you want to get an A. I see. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're, listen, let me make this real simple to you. If you're studying philosophy because you want to get an A in this, then you've missed a whole bunch of philosophy because what you ought to be asking is what's an A? Why am I here? What's a grade? What are we talking about? Now you're doing philosophy. But if I'm doing philosophy in order to arrive at the thing, you haven't sat down to think about what the thing is and the arrival and the destination. What, all right, you're I not, see. That's not philosophy anymore. You abandoned that already. You've decided to agree on a whole bunch of things already. You can't presume that a system. That is to say, every other kind of... Exactly. Every other kind of thinking presupposes a particular system. Philosophy is that one area where the intention of the thinking is to investigate er all systems. That's the point. That's the whole idea. Which means, it is the one thing, and this is what I think is really important I want to get to. It is the one area of thinking that speaks to that part of what it is to be a human more than anything else does. That is to say, it speaks to the nature of your being more than anything else does. And there's evidence of this in nothing more than the, the, the experience of learning. I'll make it real simple for you because we're all doing this right here, right now. We're all on the live and we're all learning. I say we all. Ah. Y'all are learning. I'm teaching. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? That's just how the roles go. That's just how the roles go. That's just, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm learning for everybody. I'm learning. Like I'm learning. If I make yeah, one too many yeah. jokes about my lineup, y'all leave. I'm keeping you on track. I'm See, I learned that. I learned that. No, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. We're good. I learned it. I learned it. Peace and love to everybody, fam. I learned it. We're good. No, what I'm saying is that the process of learning, there's something, there's something in the process of learning that we tend to forget. And this is what I mean by why schools aren't teaching this, right? Just think about that. Because when I'm learning, there's something weird about it. When I'm learning, in order for me to learn, I have to know that there's something I know and there's something I don't of know at the course, same time. Of course, yeah. 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 Do you see what I'm saying? Because but the problem is, the, the problem is that when I'm learning, right, I know that I don't know everything about what I'm learning. So that's why I'm learning it. But I have to know <laughs> what I'm learning in order for me to learn about it. <laughs> Which is a weird kind of trap you end up in. Because, like, how am I supposed to learn if, if all right, so there's a quote. Heidegger says, we come to know what it means to think when we ourselves try to think. If the attempt is to be successful, if we try to think, if, if in trying to think we are going to be successful in that endeavor, we must be ready to learn thinking. But as soon as we allow ourselves to become involved in such learning, we have admitted that we are not capable of thinking. Because if I'm learning, I don't know. Break that down to me in simpler terms, because that's, that's a little complex now. Right. If I'm learning thinking, if I admit to myself that I can learn thinking, you were talking about systems of thought previously. If I admit to myself that I can learn thinking, then what I'm telling myself is I don't know thinking. So the area, the weird trap I get stuck in is the thoughts that I'm currently having that are supposed to lead me to the thinking that's correct. How do I know they're going to get me there if I don't know thinking? I got you. Now, What's unique about human beings and what's unique about philosophy is the thing I was pointing to beforehand with Gobekli Tepe and the fact that every civilization has a theological basis. What's unique about human beings is that as a human being, you cannot but engage yourself in that process of quote unquote learning where there's something you intuitively know. In other words, God, spirituality, being, all things. I was having a conversation with a student of mine the other day. In fact, I don't want to air them out, but like, you know, they, might, they may or may not have been in the live in the course of this, in the course of this seminar, but I'm just saying the point is I was having a conversation with a student of mine the other day and what I was saying to that person was that what's odd about human beings is your capacity to be able to formulate the thoughts of yes. totality having never seen it. Yes. How do we How do, do, you do that? that? How do you do that? Because in your experience, you've only literally experienced what you have experienced. So the source of the information that you have, the data that you're, you're, you're deriving from the universe is very, very local, very, very small. Most people don't go travel very much. Most people don't see other yeah. countries. I know people who've never left Hastings. Like it, it, you know, it just, for a lot of people, your, your, your world of experience is relatively limited. Okay, but from there, you came up with God, the universe, life, being, ending, death, mortality, immortality. What the fuck? How did you do all of that from this material? From this, you inferred all this. And the point is not, there's two points here. Look, we can get trapped in technical thinking. 
in techni- if we were scientists, what we'd say is, ah, what's really interesting is how did you do that? And we can look at the technical thinking and we'd end up becoming Noam Chomsky. And what we'd look at is, oh, well, they received this data, but they put out all of this data, so they must be doing this, blah, 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 bullshit, 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 bullshit. If you're a philosopher, right. not the technical thinker, if you're a philosopher, the philosopher is not so concerned with how you arrived at that process of inferring totality from such minimal data. The philosopher is much more concerned with the possibility oh, of inferring I see. totality. That's completely different. Never mind how you did it. Where the fuck did that come from? Where did that That's come interesting. from? What is that possibility? What does it mean that such yes. a thought is possible for you? And only when you're philosophizing can you bring yourself to that understanding. That's to say, can you bring yourself to a, a kind of thinking that mimics learning? That is to say, can you put yourself in that honest position of submitting to the universe and the world which provides your context yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Don't get carried away and think that just because I woke up this morning, the universe started. There's a Copernican revolution in the universe. There's a Copernican revolution in your head. Like, I hate when motherfuckers wake up because they just woke up, the world just started. No, motherfucker. Like, there was a world. Relax. You're not that important. You're not the center of the universe. So what I'm saying is, if we humble ourselves slightly and submit ourselves to the context, our contextualizing matrix of the quote-unquote world, that is to say the totality of all being, the works of, of, of God and the world, you submit yourself to that. That is, to the learning of this. So you admit to yourself that I don't know it well enough in order for me to know it, but I do know what it is in order for me to learn it. That relationship, that, that sitting in that position where all I'm constantly doing is striving to understand more, involves nothing technical. Involves oh, nothing I of the see. reaching and defining and dissecting and separating out, organizing, compartmentalizing and separating out. It involves much, 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 much more to do with, it has much more to do with ethics, it has much more to do with the way I move in my world because it has everything to do with my understanding of my place here and now. This, all of this, it's that tension between my particular existence and the possibility of totality. And the relationship between those two things is maintained only by my capacity to think I see. them. I see. You see, literally. My, which means my capacity to think the relationship between the totality of beings, quote unquote God, and myself from my particular perspective is the sole thing which provides my meaning, it provides my value, it provides my assessment, it provides my understanding, it provides my clarity, it provides my peace, it provides my ethics, it dictates how I move in the world. So in order for me to suffer less, in order for me to understand more, and in order for me to submit more often and become more humbled in the world that I'm in, it's necessary for me to engage in what's called philosophical thought. The problem is that it's nowadays considered uh-huh. philosophical okay. thought. Okay, I see. <laughs> we're 60 minutes in, I'm wrapping up the seminar like that. Blah! But there's That's no how we do out anymore. here. If you all still think philosophy ain't important, <laughs> hey, listen, we've got a part two to this motherfucker. We've got part two to this motherfucker. I want more. Hey, you got to come back for Missy's movies. Your homegirl got her movie references. We've got more references. We've got more quotes. We've got a summary. We've got back over everything we just said. Any more details, we're going to summarize everything. I'm going to see you all in part two, and we'll come back for that ish. But Missy's movies are a critical thing. I'm really enjoying um, this. I can't yeah, wait. That's, that's, that's our hour simple. What up now? Welcome back. All right. Hey, for real, as I was waiting for your live to come on, I was sitting here smiling to myself like, oh, I'm oh, learning oh, things. Like, I like it. Being in philosophy and like stuff is amazing. I know, I know, I know. I ain't doing that accent all day. That's the one accent I repeat. <laughs> so, what we on it? Missy's movies, fam. We got our thing to do. Yo, listen, I know part two, we have, we've had previous spillovers. Part two, we have previous, like, you know, we kick it a little longer and we talk about this issue a little more because, you know, it's spillover. But, but I want to get to Missy's movies. So, unless you got some questions, homegirl. I do, I, but just, because I, you said some really deep, deep, deep stuff in that last two minutes. I, and I, I wonder if you can just like roll back and cement it, like, you know, 
Hit it home. That's why we're here, God damn it. That's what we do give here. Me, give it to me. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in such a good mood. I'm loving this. I want you to cement it so that it sits. What? And then and then we can talk fun stuff. All right, I feel, like it's cause I, I feel like I just spent an hour trying to explain to you why philosophy is not cementing things. So, like, I don't know. I'm a little confused as to what it was that you want cemented. No, I liked what we ended with is I really like the idea that we ended with um, that it's possible for all of us is how I understood it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am. It's, it's what we do. Yes, it's what we already do. Um, but the other nice thing that you suggested is that to have philosophical thinking is to, to have comportment and to have ethics yes, and to have... So give me that. I feel like a lot of people act you know the quote uh, act without thinking right so how would you reposition that with philosophically act without thinking no so i'm i'm suggesting that a lot of people act without due thinking without due consideration without exactly. do anything meanwhile i also dislike people who use philosophy willy-nilly and they go i'm just being philosophical i'm like no you're clearly not <laughs> no but it's cool but that's what i'm saying the, the the availability of the term for people to use in that fashion is because it has been made a technical uh, phrase you see what i'm saying because it's been made technical and specific you can use it here you can tuck it in here and there and sound mad special like the way i can throw in latin here and there and sound like i know some shit even though i know some shit like i do know some shit i don't know how much shit i know but i know some shit the point is what i'm saying is we can throw that kind of stuff in there and then sound mad smart. So people throw the term philosophy in there and sound mad smart. But it's only because the term has been turned into a technical definition or uh, having a technical definition in order for me to be able to throw it in like that. Like, if it meant what I'm saying, it means, how are you going to throw it in? What do you mean you're thinking philosophical? What are you not thinking philosophical? Like, it'll be a weird I phrase see. to use. Like, hey, listen, just to be philosophical about this, like, when, when, when were you not? Um, okay, what about this like wasn't it. philosophical? Because let me just make, okay. let me make, make this real clear to you. You and I both walked in and said, good morning. I'm not sure that that's the case. That's one. And then when we leave this office, you and I are both going to say, see you tomorrow. And I'm not sure that's the case for two. Because philosophically speaking, maybe. But we both are functioning on that assumption. We both know this. There's nothing new about it. Like, I can't tell you that. Like, if I say that to you and we look like a fool, because you know this the same way I know this. But that means that we're both working on that assumption in the first place. So we're both working on understanding of, of the universe, time, what have you, reality, the nature of all of those things is already the prefigured thought before you open your mouth. When I, when I say that everybody's doing philosophy, when I say that philosophy is inherently ethical, it means two things. There's a practical and, and, a, and a kind of like a higher or a transcendental sense in this. The practical sense in which philosophy is both is, is ethical and uh, is something that everybody's doing. In a practical sense, it's, every, it's what everybody's doing is because it's, it's what everyone's doing before they open their mouth. That's what I'm saying, right? It's all the stuff that was happening before you open your mouth. So when you woke up in the morning, it's real. I had this conversation with somebody the other day. I was trying to explain to them how to relax your fucking mind, right? Because my man's stressed all day long. He talks all day long. He's going through all kinds of shit. Da -da 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 -da. And like, you know, I feel for him because like he's going through some real things. But I'm like, homie, you need to calm the fuck down. So part of that process was teaching him how to, how to calm the fuck down first thing in the morning. And this ain't hard to do. It's just because what happens is as soon as you start your day, you start your day. And that's the problem. Because you think a day has started. You see what I'm saying? Thinking, oh. you see? I caught you already. You see? Thinking philosophically just means, I right, stop. Hold up. What do you mean a day has started? Stop. I see. I see. I see. And what I mean by that is this. The practical steps of it, this is real simple, right? So what that means is when you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes, that first thought that comes to your mind is your stomach rumbling. And you want to do that first thing that you want to do, usually first thing like, that you do in the morning. Either you want to get yourself washed and dressed and get ready to go to work, or you try and feed yourself before you go to work because you know I ain't going to be no time on the, tra on the train, what have you, da da da, whatever. <clears throat> what I'm saying is that first process, whether that's your stomach ticking or your mind reminding you of how late you are for work or what have you, that first one is the first thing that starts that, that procedure. And the second you respond to that, that's going to be your whole day now. Now you're going to spend a whole day chasing stimulants. Because what happens? I see. Respond to that action, and then there's a reaction to your response, and then you got to respond to that reaction, and then there's a reaction to that. I see. Now you're gonna do this all day long. Instead, instead, you just don't for five minutes. Just don't. Like I know you're hungry and you want to make breakfast. I know you're late for work, but you're already late for work, man. Relax. Plus coronavirus. Who the fuck? Shit, just do. Like, I know all of those things. I know all of those things. That, there's things I've got to do. And there's something on my mind. I know. I know. But at some point in the course of this day, you are going to waste five minutes. Make it this morning. At some point in the course of the days, you're going to misuse five minutes. Make it now. Just save that misusing your five minutes for this morning. And don't do nothing 
but nothing. Don't do nothing but nothing. Your stomach rumbles, I ain't doing nothing. Your mind starts taking over, I ain't doing nothing. Your brain starts stressing, I ain't doing nothing. I'm not moving for shit. Five minutes, just chill the fuck out. Just, just breathe correctly. Wake up correctly. Observe the sky for five minutes. Like take in the bird song for two seconds. Look at the people outside. Look at the parking lot. Uh, look at that parking lot. Things aren't so bad. Look at the parking lot, Larry. Just look at that parking lot. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Y'all get the reference in five seconds. Y'all get the reference in five seconds. But I kill homegirl, but y'all get the reference in five seconds. No, I apologize for that, because that's an inside joke, but y'all get it in a minute. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you did that. I like missing movies. Y'all got away from missing movies. That joke's coming. I said, y'all get this in a second. But the point is, no, but I'm being deadly serious, right? You've got to take in the context, the contextualizing matrix that gives value and meaning to the day that you're trying to pursue. But think about that. You have to take in the contextualizing matrix that gives value and meaning to the day that you are trying to pursue. That is to say, whatever it is that I'm trying to pursue in the course of that day will be determined in large part by the value and the meaning inherent in the world in which I exist. It's the contextualizing matrix of my environment. If I don't spend five minutes looking at it, like, what the fuck? Then you're just running on stimuli. And then you get confused at the end of the day. Like, yo, I feel like I did nothing. What the you didn't do nothing. You did nothing. Oh. It's because you, I hate to break it to you. I hate to be that motherfucker. But like, this is philosophy. I don't do no bullshit over here. I hate to, yeah, literally. Now you know what that means. I don't do no Harry Frankfurt. <laughs> yeah, literally here. no bullshit. Don't do no bullshit over here. No Harry Frankfurt nonsense here. Now we really philosophize. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to tell you straight. Once, once you're just responding to stimuli now, you ain't do nothing. You just responded to stimuli all fucking day long. You're a human being with the capacity to conceive of totality. And what you did was went, I'm hungry. I've got to go to work. Fuck. Dave's gonna be really mad at me today. Shit, all the Sarah's I told that yesterday. Oh fuck, am I gonna shut the fuck up for five minutes? Okay, I love it. Don't do that shit. I'm not saying don't do that. Do that shit. But can you give it five fucking minutes of just doing nothing? Just don't fucking do anything. Like, don't stress about coronavirus. Don't stress about what's going on in the world. I'm not saying that these things aren't true, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't think about these things. Please think about these things. But just give yourself five fucking minutes. How do you expect to meet your target if you don't walk to it correctly? Like, it's real simple. Like, yo, nah, Bruce Lee documentary came on the other day, so my mind's like, uh! The point is, but do you see what I'm saying? Like, how the hell do you expect to meet your target if you don't step to it correctly? But like, you all rush to everything. Like, you want to wake up in the morning and go, bah, 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 bah. All right, cool. No, I bet. You're going to fuck up your whole day and then wonder why. All right, bet, man. Come on. But this is what I mean. Practically speaking, it slows you down, right? Practic philosophical thought slows you down, practically speaking. But ethically speaking, once you do that, that is to say, once you take five minutes to take in the context, that is to say, take five minutes to take in your world, I bet you you'll find you're a nicer person. Because what you'll understand, it's not, it's not a complex thing. What you'll understand is the world. That is to say, you will see what it requires of you. You're not responding to your own stimuli. You're not responding to that buzz that's going on in your head. You're not responding to what's demanded of you in the office environment, wherever else. You're responding to the call. The call is, your, is what we would regularly call our conscience. You're responding to that. Like when you walk around and you see an old lady, you want to help her out. But when you're busy in your own mind, you want to see her. But when you're strolling around on yeah. a sunny day and going, oh, you know what? I feel really philosophical today. I'm just looking at the clouds and wondering we're all in these maids. And then look, I saw an old lady and I thought, well, while I'm doing nothing, I'll help her out. Yeah, that, you fucking... That. <laughs> like, fucking that. Like, fucking that. I love it. I love it. Like, no. I love it. Listen, it took me 12 years studying to get this shit down. So if y'all aren't taking notes, but listen... It ain't that complicated. This is what I mean. There's, there's an ethics inherent in it because you comport yourself in accordance with what's required of you versus what you want. You see? That's ethical inherent. And then the, the, the transcendent sense of it is real simple, which is to say that ethics is fundamentally a, com a compassionate care for something. It's, it's fundamentally that. Okay. The desire to understand okay. something, or that say the desire to want to know what a thing is based on care and compassion. Right? Like let's say I want to move a certain way because it makes sense to do so. It's born of no other reason. Like if you, if you think about why you helped that old lady, it wasn't because it was advancing anything. Like you weren't gaining anything yeah. out of this. You weren't going to win a prize. You weren't going to re be recognized. The old lady probably won't remember you. She might have Alzheimer's. Like it's not even like a thing like that. But you did it because you, it was right. To do and it. it's not about morality. Nah. Ethics is not the same as more. Yeah, nah. it's just doing the right doing thing. Doing the right thing here and now. It's doing, doing that. Like that. And it's that thing that you know is the right thing to do. And no one had to teach you that shit.
Like no one else yeah. could, when you saw somebody fall down, intuitively you went yeah. to pick them up. Yeah. Don't yeah. bullshit me. Don't bullshit me. Yeah. I know you thought twice. Like, don't Harry Frankfurt you. Don't Frankfurt the fuck out of me, man. Ain't no sausages in this bitch. We don't do that. This ain't no sausage fest. We don't do that. No home like no, no, no. we don't do that. That's not what's happening over here. We don't do none of that bullshit. No Frankfurts, no sausages, no nothing. What I'm saying is when you saw somebody falling down, you intuitively went to pick them up. I'm not saying that you should. I'm just saying it came up. When you saw a, a hungry animal, you intuitively went to feed it. Like, it was just intuitive. Like, I'm not saying that it was, it's the right thing or God demanded it of you. I'm just saying you did it. Like, because it just made sense. Why the fuck wouldn't I? Because you're responding to a call. You're not responding to what I want to do. I'm responding to a call. I'm, I looked at my environment and went, oh, they hungry. That's the thing. And I figure if we do this, like, every morning, it becomes a method of living, like a way of living. Well, not... yes and no, because what I'm trying to get at is that it is the way you're living. I see, you yeah. You ain't paying attention most of the time. I I'm just saying pay attention. Pay attention. Hashtag, okay. hashtag pay attention. <laughs> hashtag pay attention, people! Hashtag pay attention. For now. Hashtag pay attention for now. But, like, you know, in about six months' time when we level up, hashtag pay me like a motherfucker. We don't level up. What? <laughs> just we got a clock. I'm hey, hey, listen, I see all you're listening. We're on a clock, all right? It's coming. Yeah, just wait till we level up. You'll be subscribing like a motherfucker. But in any case, no, but that's all I'm saying. Like th there's there's an inherent ethics in what we're calling philosophical thinking, but what I'm saying is the kind of thinking that you do before you engage all of your stimulants. It's the kind of thinking that you knew was there in the first place. It's the kind of thinking that had to be there in order for you to conceive of God or the totality of all things. I'm not saying it isn't interesting that you conceive of God, and I'm not saying that we can't have a religious debate about what God is and what God isn't. What I'm much more interested in is how the fuck do you come up with God? That's way more interesting to me. You came up with God? Yeah. How the fuck? But you know what that means. Yeah. How do you know what that means? Well, I don't really, but you keep saying it. Yeah. All right. What? <laughs> I feel like this is a nice transition now to uh Mrs. Movies. Yo, Mrs. Movies. We need yo, no, so... we, like, we need like uh some kind of like drums or something. We need some kind of intention. We do. Like, we need a cheesy jingle. We need a trumpet or a bugle or something. It's like that, 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 that. We need something, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's Mrs. Movies, fam. It's like a whole event. So <clears throat> You know, you've been talking about thinking and God has come up. And of course, the movie that's come to mind is A Serious Man. Are you, are you mocking me? <laughs> is that what's happening? You're mocking me. A Serious Man, are you mocking me? He said no. Seriously, great ass movie. I do believe you love it. I do love it. I ain't joking. I do. I do. That's a great film. It's a fucking brilliant film. So, for real, for anybody who's here who hasn't watched it, you have to watch it. If nothing else, if nothing else, the dialogue is killer. Like, for those modern guys who love Tarantino, yeah, Tarantino is great. But dialogue like this is killer. Nah, for real, right? for real, for real, for real, for real. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. So the essence of which, or the quote that I want to bring, uh, uh, say to you guys at the moment is, is a conversation between uh, Rabbi Nachna yeah. and uh, Larry Gopnik. Yeah. And Larry, Paul Larry. Is shout, shout, out, shout, out shout out our Jewish brothers. Shout out our Jewish brothers and sisters out there. Big <laughs> shout out to all our Jewish brothers and sisters. What well, up, our Paul Larry is very confused. Why am I here? Why, why is God, you know, why does God do these things to me? Anyway, so he's having this conversation with Rabbi Nachna. And Rabbi Nachna says this. How does God speak to us? It's a good question. You know Lee Sussman. Dr. Sussman? I think I, yeah. Did he ever tell you about the goy's teeth? No. I, what goy? So, Lee is at work one day. You know he has the orthodontic practice there at Great Bear. He's making a plaster mold. It's for corrective bridge work in the mouth of one of his patients, Russell Krauss. The mold dries and Lee is examining it one day before fabricating an appliance. He notices something unusual. There appears to be something engraved on the inside of the patient's lower incisors. Hey, 
Vav Shin Yud, Ayin Nun Yud, Hoshi Eini, Help Me, Save Me. This, in a goy's mouth, Larry. He calls the goy back on the pretense of needing additional measurements for the appliance. Who are you? Noticed any other problems with your teeth? No. There it is. Oh, she ain't. Help me. Son of a gun. Sussman goes home. Can Sussman eat? Sussman can't eat. Can Sussman sleep? Sussman can't sleep. Sussman looks at the molds of his other patients, Goy and Jew alike. Seeking other messages, he finds none. He looks in his own mouth. Nothing. He looks in his wife's mouth. Nothing. But Sussman is an educated man. Not the world's greatest sage, maybe. No Rabbi Marshak. But he knows a thing or two about the Zohar and the Kabbalah. He knows that every Hebrew letter has its numeric equivalent. 8454473. Seven digits, a phone number maybe. Hello? Do you know a goy named Krauss, Russell Krauss? Who? Where have I called? The Red Owl in Bloomington. Thanks so much. He goes. It's a Red Owl. Groceries, what have you. Sussman goes home. What does it mean? He has to find out if he is ever to sleep again. He goes to see the Rabbi Nachna. He comes and he sits right where you're sitting right now. What does it mean, Rabbi? Is it a sign from Hashem? Help me? I, Sussman, should be doing something to help this guy. Don't what? The teeth don't say. Or maybe I'm supposed to help people generally lead a, a more righteous life. Is the answer in Kabbalah and Torah? Or is there even a question? Tell me, Rabbi, what can such a sign? So, what did you tell him? Sussman? Yes. Is it relevant? Well, isn't that why you're telling me? Okay. Nakhna says, look, the teeth, we don't know. A sign from Hashem, don't know. Helping others, couldn't hurt. No, no, but who put it there? Was it for him, Sussman, or for whoever found it, or for just, for, for... We can't know it? everything. It sounds like you don't know anything. Why even tell me the story? First I should tell you, then I shouldn't. <laughs> what happened to Sussman? What would happen? Not much, he went back to work. For a while, he checked every patient's teeth for new messages. He didn't find any. In time, he found he stopped checking. He returned to life. These questions that are, that are bothering you, Larry, maybe they're like a toothache. Feel them for a while, then they go away. I don't want it to just go away. I want an answer. Sure, we all want the answer. Hashem doesn't owe us the answer, Larry. Hashem doesn't owe us anything. The obligation runs the other way. Why does he make us feel the questions if he's not going to give us any answers? <laughs> he hasn't told me. And what happened to the goy? The goy? Who cares? <laughs> For real, everybody, please watch 
a serious, serious man. man. Cohen Cohen brothers, man. the Cohen brothers, the Cohen brothers. Geniuses. It's a great film. It's a world class film. But it's a brilliant thing. You know, there's a there's a corollary to that story. There's a there's a Buddhist corollary to that same story. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For anybody who who get, don't get it twisted about Judaism, that's just deep as fuck. But like, um, there's 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 a corollary to that story in uh, a teacher and a student, Buddhist teacher and his student. He's like this meditation master. And his student asks him a whole bunch of questions and they're talking all day long and what have you about the meaning of things. And da, 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 da. And in the end, he asks him, like, listen, okay, I get all of that, but I'm still confused about one thing. I'm still baffled. He goes, what happens after you die? And my man just looks at him and goes, I haven't died yet. I'll tell you when I get there, bro. Like, <laughs> what do you want from me? Like, I don't know. I can tell you this. I'm here now. I can tell you all this. I don't, I, I don't know. I'll tell you when I get there. You know what I'm saying? And this is what I mean by that, like that, that, that centering oneself, submitting oneself to one's contextualizing matrix. You know what I'm saying? It's that sense of, of humbling yourself before the totality of the universe that you are a part and parcel of, that only you somehow can understand from your perspective, which is a weird thing. That's just, and it's true. It is true. The only you can understand it from where you're standing. Only you stand where you stand. No one else, yeah. literally, causality requires that nobody can physically stand where you stand, which means, literally speaking, only you are seeing the sun bouncing off that thing that way. Only you see that, that way, from that angle. Only you understand the poetry of that movement, of that star at that time from this position. Only you get that. And only you understand the meaning of the movement of your heart and your emotions and your, your feelings and your life and the narrative of your experiences in the context of the backdrop that you walk through. Only you see that. Do you see what I'm saying? For one to spend their entire life never investigating it, the fuck were you doing? The fuck were you doing? We do this shit once. We do this shit once. The fuck were you doing? I love it. Homie, were you out here There's for? There's meaning. There's mad meaning. Like, were you out here for? Like, I don't understand. Fam, like, the fuck are you doing? If you ain't doing that shit, I don't know what you're doing. Like, I don't know what the rest of this is. I mean, I know what you're doing. You're, you're doing bullshit and finding out whether or not bats are real and finding out responding to stimuli stimuli and like talking about all kinds of other bullshit that's what you're doing but like what i'm saying is it's not to sum it up it's not a question like is philosophy a waste of time it is time what are you talking about like what are you talking about how did you know what time was without philosophy like what are you talking about it's just baffling i love this is your philosophy left like no no philosophy to the left Vlad. Hey, listen, just so y'all know, this is how we philosophize where I come from. We philosophize back and to the left, you know? Uh, back to the left, you know? Uh, go back to the left, you know? Uh, that's how we philosophize, but that's just what it is. We go back and to the left. Like, this, you just, I love whatever it. You're I looking, love it. I love it. Back and to the left. Just go back to what you're presupposing about what it is that you're looking at and then go to the left of that. Just be like, yo, so what's that look like from here? That. That's what you're looking at. I got you. Back I got you. Back left, yeah. Uh, go back to the left, you know? uh, Philosophy back into the left. Back to the left, man. This is how it is. Khalas, isn't it, man? Get my line, man. Hashtag khalas. Oh, what do you want from my life, man? Just give me my pause. Anyway, listen, listen. Let me just let me just say this. I want to thank everybody for turning up. Part one and part two. You know, I know I keep you up for a good hour and twenty. So much love. I appreciate everybody for turning up. I know you don't have to. You kind of do have to, but I appreciate it. You have to because like, I'm a feeling. Great learning. You kind of have to because where the fuck else are you getting these bars? Where is that happening? Where is education being recreated for a new generation like a motherfucker? That's what I'm saying. That's what we do. TBT like a motherfucker. That's just that's our thing. We're building together. Hashtag building together. That's what we're doing. Uh, but yeah, so look, you know how it is. Every week, we'll be here next week, Monday, 7 o'clock, same time, same place, IG Live. We'll be back up on the YouTube, so you're going to subscribe. Go check out the YouTube page. Go check out all the different seminars. We've got all the information there. There's clips from the previous podcast. We've got our study mixes are starting to go up all on there. But all of the study mixes are all available on SoundCloud if you want to check that out and Spotify if you want to check that out too. So go subscribe, click on like on everything. Go do your fucking thing. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Like, yeah, we're busy. I'm busy, all right? You're everywhere. We every... I'm a philosopher. Shit, we invented omnipotence. What are you talking about?
Shit. You are on fire today. Yo, some I'm telling you, that Casanova track had me running, man. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> that Casanova just like, uh, that put that fire in me, man. Yo, Black Lives Still Matter. I love it. I love it. Um, But yeah, in any case, seriously, thank you. Much love to everybody. Honestly, for real. Much, 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 much love to everybody. Appreciate all you turning up. Um, Homegirl, thank you as ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much love to you too. And I'm going to see everybody here next week, 7 p.m., Got another issue for you. We're going to kick it. We'll break it down. We'll chop it up. We'll figure things out. TBT, build on together. You know how it is. Ain't no one else doing what we do. Peace, one, love. I'll see you all later. You ain't tough, you a motherfucking buster. Say something and I motherfucking touch you. You ain't tough, you a motherfucking buster. Say something and I motherfucking touch you. I'm running down, nigga. I'm running down. 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 I take a life with a knife. Fuck the fight, stiff with the mere rice. I'm Mary Thorna, standing on that corner. You a gun that fire run up on you. You a racist, you a coward. Screaming louder, black power. I got an AK for the JJ. I got a bigger friend for George Zimmerman. Trump in office, who's voting? They killed Neil Wilson out in Oakland. Let's get the cracker. Who attacked him? I'm feeling blacker. They better call for backup. You ain't tough, you a motherfucking buster. Say something and I motherfucking cut you. You ain't tough, you a motherfucking buster. Say something and I motherfucking cut you. I'm running down, nigga. I'm running down. I'm running down, nigga. I'm running down. For what they did to Freddie Gray in the van Don't give a damn, time to rebel For what they did to Walter Scott and John Bell Fucking nerve them, to say we murder them When they murdered them, I was Ferguson It's time to strike back, time to strike now It's time to fight now, I'll be the Mike Brown Philando Castile, you a hero But to them people, your life was worth zero Look how they left you in your vehicle Shot wait, I'm all in the cop face I'm irate you ain't tough, you a motherfucking buster. Say something and I motherfucking cut you. You ain't tough, you a motherfucking buster. Say something and I motherfucking cut you. I'm running down, nigga. I'm running down. I'm running down, nigga. I'm running down.